Say hi to Fresh Sales, the feature-packed, affordable CRM for businesses of all sizes. Fresh Sales helps you convert visitors into leads, close leads into customers, and nurture customers to keep them coming back for more. That's why over 15,000 customers across the world trust Fresh Sales. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions.
Hi, thank you for the time to join us on this webinar. I'd like to take a, tell a story from the movie called Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is on this expedition to find this lost ark that meant a lot to the children of Israel a very long time ago. And so Indiana Jones goes to Arabia. And those guys are really hostile to him. As a matter of fact, they want to take his life. And so one of the times they actually chase him with swords to take his life. And so they chase him to a tight corner and Indiana Jones has to turn back. And he sees this guy with his long sword wielding it. Indiana Jones to kill him. And so Indiana Jones takes out his gun and shoots the guy smack in the face and the guy dies so he's in a sort of crisis or in a difficult situation Indiana Jones uses what he has to get out of that situation next I'd like to tell the story of David and Goliath most of you will be familiar with this or with this story rather and David is sent by his father to, to help his brothers at the war front, or to give them. And so while he's there, he hears Goliath challenging the children of Israel, telling them that they should bring up a contestant that would challenge him. 
and if that contestant wins the Israelites but if he Goliath wins is the Israelites will serve and so David takes up the challenge he puts five small stones into a shepherd bag and then puts one into his sling shot and he runs towards the giant swings his slingshot stone goes smack into Goliath's head and Goliath falls down so David uses what he has to get out of that crisis or that difficult situation and so history said with so many companies who have gone through recessions depressions some even war some even hurricanes and they came out of those hurricanes much better companies even more profitable companies people like Kubos made the during World War II FedEx made their killing during the Great Recession of 1973 to 1975 Netflix is making a killing right now Amazon is doing the same right now. During the 16 month recession of between 1973 and 1975 is when Paul Allen and Bill Gates came up with the easy to use Windows OS that blew Microsoft into millions. But I'd like to draw our attention to Lego, to these two companies, Lego and Apple. I'll start with Apple. So Apple during one of their downtimes, or during one of the downtimes, the recession in, in the U.S. Do now, I want to say something. During a recession, people only spend money on necessities and essentials. So they are in survival mode, and so they only spend money on things that are very necessary and essential to them. And so, up does something. Listen. And during this time, and all that, are luxury, money on that. So Apple turns that around. And so the music that they were hearing in the parties and the clubs and all that, Apple put them on an iPod, right? And brought those music to these young folks. And so with the parties, brought it to them in their homes and so in with that so also lego lego saw that his competition or his competitors were making ready-made toys and like i said during the recession don't spend money on luxury and at that time toys were luxury because you spend money on only necessities and essentials <clears throat> excuse me so what's usually happen at home is that once the children they get cranky and they cry a lot and so the parents get worried but the truth is that at that time are uh, luxury they are not necessities or essentials so what did Lego do? Lego said, why do we, should we make toys that are already, that cannot be changed? So what they did was that, why don't we build in blocks, toy building blocks, so that these children can build whatever they want to build. When they are tired, they can remove it and build something else. And so Lego, was able to solve their need in the time of downturn. The men who built America, Vanderbilt, Rockefeller, JP Morgan, all did this during tough times. You have to keep your business thriving in this so-called crisis or pandemic. But before I continue this myself, my name is Stephen Pinkra. 
co-founder of a business called Ivan Consult, and I lead the business development team. Now, I'll be talking about how to use the power of mega partnering to actually and strategically you have to get what you need during a crisis such as a pandemic or a recession. I'll take it again, how to use the power of mega partnering to ethically and strate strategically use what you have to get what you need during a crisis such as a pandemic or a recession. So back to the question, what do you have to keep your business thriving in this so-called, in this call, in the so-called So I'd like to bring a concept to our notice called relational capital, which is, I'm answering that question now. So I'll start. Relational capital is the maintaining, mining, and fully developing high quality relationships with an organization, individual, or group through continuous nurturing, which influences and impacts your business. Let's take it again. Relational capital is the maintaining, maximizing, and fully developing high-quality relationships with an organization, individual, or group through continuous nurturing, which influences and impacts your business further. There are some things that we need to get straight. You need to know who your client is you need to be super clear on who your client is on the opposite side you need to know who is not your client so you need to be super clear at that after that the next thing is that you must map the client's journey end to end from end to end right the next is that you list all the resources you need to satisfy his clients, right? So first, super clear on who, the, who your client is, map out the journey end to end, <clears throat> and then list the resources that you need. And I'll add here that you can also list the assets that you have. So I'm getting someone with this. List the resources that you need that you have. Then be super clear on who has large access to these resources that you need to serve this client. So, see how I'm using asset, assets and resources? All right. So, thinking time questions. Who has easiest and fastest access to these resources? What is the irresistible offer that I can bring on the table? right and how can i use my assets as a leverage to access this person's assets for relationship so let's drill a little deeper <clears throat> excuse me who is your ideal client and the question you need to ask yourself to be able to achieve this hundred percent you need to know what business are you in? Now, what business are you in? Some people say, I'm a lawyer. I'm a teacher. I'm a doctor. I'm an engineer. But what business are you in? How do you, the business that you're doing, view your business from your client's eye or from your customer's eye? You see that you're not just a lawyer, you're not just an accountant, you're not just a teacher or a doctor. So let's, let's, let's leave that. Let's leave that. Okay, so the next thing is, what problem does it solve? So you want to problem your product or service solves, right? Then you want to drill deep to this person. You want to go into demographics. What's the name of this person? Your persons. Age range. Gender. Location. Married or single. What's the occupation and what's the income level? So, <clears throat> if you are targeting a particular industry, 
right so this will help to target individuals in that in those companies in that industry so for example you're targeting the insurance com insurance industry so you need to target c-level players right c suits in those companies so you need to drill down using these demographics you can drill down the psychographics you want to know the goals of these people how is your product or service or solution helping them meet their goals? How is your product or service or solution helping them with their challenges to mitigate against their challenges? How is your product, service or solution alleviating their pain points? What have they tried? What worked? What didn't work? What are the possible objections to next? You need to map the journey, like I said. So you've got super clear on who your client is the next thing is you want to map the journey end to end to do this, to do this you must know what is your client buys before your product or service you need to know what is interaction with you using your product or service right you want to know the other things that he uses that adds value or increase the utility the guy the customer or client derives from using your product or service then you want to know what he uses after your product or service then you want to know what he uses instead of your product or service right so let's go like i said the drop a list of the resources that you need to satisfy these clients. So it may be capital, it may be awareness, maybe sales and marketing may have to do with distribution channel, have to do with personnel, the personnel staff, anything that's the resources that you need to satisfy this client. So who has large access to these resources that I need to satisfy this client? So you need to think on that. Furthermore, who has easiest and fastest access to these resources? What is this irresistible offer? And how can I use my assets as leverage other person's assets for mutual beneficial relationships? So I'll skip on. So there are different types of relational capital. <clears throat> There's joint venture, Daniel spoke of last week. There's mega partnering. Strategic alliance, strategic partnership, battering, etc. But for this lesson or for this training, we are going to be talking about mega partnering. So what's mega partnering? This is using the concept of relational capital, like we said, to achieve maximum leverage. The purpose is how to use relational capital maximizing strategies. I think it's how to use relational capital maximizing strategies. To multiply the success and profitability of any business that you own, any product that I've ever owned. And why do you go into mega partnering during a crisis? Like I said, during a crisis, money is spent on essentials or necessities. Every other thing is luxury. So, in this situation, Money is not the currency. And the currency for trade, right, is, are your assets. So you use your assets as your currency for trade, not money. Because nobody's going to give you any money if it's not or, or unessential. So the only thing you, have, you can trade with are your assets so let's use an example five seven minutes to explain all the, the principles that we've had, that we've talked about we talked about first be super clear about who your client is second map the journey three list the resources that you need to satisfy clients and also added list the assets that you need that you have rather so the resources that you need and the assets that you have all right so for purposes of this exercise that we 
know who our client is. So this auto mechanic, his name is Xiong, right? So he knows who his client is. Yes, he has a brilliant idea who his client is, and he's in the car repairing, I mean car repairing um, industry. So the industry that he is. So we want to map the journey of his customer or of his clients rather. So he's in the car repairing business, right? So obviously, if he wants to map it, so before this person gets to him, he needs to have a car, must have a car or buy a car or purchase a car. So he wants to drill deep, deeper. When does he start to think of buying a car? So when does this client start to think of buying a car? So he wants to be at that, at that place, right? So usually when there's an increase in income or there's, there's an increase in revenue with an addition to the family, or maybe it's just a status thing. Furthermore, he wants to know who do they buy these cars from? Was large access? Remember we talked about access. So who has large access to these resources? Because we know once you can get that, that will solve most of his issues. So he sees that when they even buy these cars, they need insurance, they need vehicle papers. This is all before they get to him. They need insurance, vehicle papers, tin permits. And sometimes my analysis of the car. Now hold that. Then during doing the repairs for them, they will like probably waiting area, you know, food and drinks entertainment while you're waiting for the quick service that he's doing, or probably is a not a, re, a minor repair that he's doing. So they'll like probably bring their kids a play area, you know, just to accommodate them. Then the next thing that he's this person has business with Xiong for like four to five years. He wants to get a new car. So that's after, right? And then instead of uh, his competition, other auto mechanics, right? So he now lists all the resources that he needs, right? So workshop, he needs to get his tools, right? Awareness so he can get access to these clients. Of course, he needs funds or capital. Then he needs access to quality. And of course, maybe he might need to hire an apprentice. And so, like I said, he needs to also have his assets. So, Sheung believes that his assets, his main asset is his skill. As an auto mechanic. So, if that is his skill, what he's bringing to the table, his auto mechanic skill, his car repairing skills. So, remember during that one, during the analysis, we said that he, he drills down to before, during, and after. So, Sheung goes to the car lot and then talks to Mr. Chinedum, who is the owner, and tells Mr. Chinedum, that there's a particular fear, there's a common fear that buyers have. They want to purchase a car. They have the fear of the durability of the car. Do they just take what the seller, what Chinedum says or what the seller says? Do they just do that? Do they just take what their friend says? But what, is there any way that they could be sure of the durability of the car, the durability of the car, Durability of the components of the car, so that he can have an idea of when he needs to be a particular component of his car, so that it doesn't just shut down on him. So Chinedu is listening to, to share one. He's like, hmm, all right. So Sheon now tells Chinedu, well, I can help with that. I will do an assessment report on the present state of that car. So I can even drill down and do some form of predictive analysis, right? It's questions like, is this your first car? 
If not, we, 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 what will you be using the primary for? <clears throat> so he's not, so you, you can ask him. His response will be like, yeah, I'm using mainly for going to work. So where do you work? I work um, on the mainland where I live, <coughs> excuse me, on the island. He says, oh, okay, so that means your commuting time, there's hardly traffic on your commuting route. says yes. And then he says, okay, <coughs> so where does your child's school, or rather, <coughs> where's your child's school, rather? And he now says, oh, my child's school is close to my office. So that means you usually drop, <coughs> excuse me, drop your child before he goes. He says, yes, so I do some school runs just before, um, just before the, the office. So he's trying to gauge how much miles or how many miles this car will do averagely in a week. So once he's able to gauge that, he's able to, there's going to be so so number of wear and tear on this particular part car, on these parts of the car, and then it will take you probably like maybe two to three months or four months or five months, depending on the usage, when you are going to change the particular parts. So it gives him this brush, this um, assessment. And so this guy sees him, because he's Chinedum as a trusted advisor. So he's like, wow. Okay, guess what? Whenever there's, there's a problem with that car, or there's an issue with that car, who is he going to go to first? He's going to come to Chinedu, come to Shem. Now, Chinedu, now Shem now tells Chinedu that every person that you bring, or rather every person that you bring to come and repair, this car at my at shop which is close which is which he has given um um shell in his car lot chinedum takes 60 percent and then chinedum takes sorry and shell takes 40 percent but subsequent times that, that person comes shell will take a bigger share which is 60 percent and then Chinedum will take forty percent. So Chinedum knows that any time or every time he refers to to Sheung, he gets money. So now Sheung now has access to Chin, right? Now has access to Chinedum list. So all the people that come to buy cars from Chinedum. We always do this analysis or assessment. He now makes Chinedum look really good. You look at him as a trusted advisor. And then he sends them to. So now remember, Sheung's only asset before were his skills. But now he has added another asset to him, which is Chinedum's list. So with that, he now goes to meet. Obina. Obina is a guy that sells genuine parts. And so Chinedun tells this, the auto mechanic tells Obina that, look, I will be, I have this list of people and I will be frequenting your shop, send my boy to get quality parts from you very often. So let's just do this deal. I can assure you that I'll be in your office at least three times a week to get parts to repair my um, clients or customers' vehicles with. And so it tells you for the first three times in a week that I come to your office or I, or I send my boy to your shop, Give me a normal price, the regular price. Fourth, fifth time, or any time after that third time, you give me a discount. So, I come the fourth time, you give me like a 40% discount. If I come the fifth time, you give me like 45% discount. So, every time after the third time, I get a better deal. And I'll be like, wow, why not? 
So with this, Sheung, let's go start from the beginning. Sheung only had a skill as his assets. The Chinedum's list to it. Like he has a shop in Chinedum's car lot. He has a very good relationship with, he's built another relationship rather, with um, Obina, the spare part dealer. And so you can see that he is, the partnerships at different levels, one with Obina, with Chinedum. So you can see that all from one scale, one asset, is able to leverage that. The next thing is, so we've done before, we're now doing during. So when they come to his shop or when they come to his, his workshop, he had a car lot, right? So obviously there are different things that they could do to keep them entertained. Have a play area for children, the children of the people that come to repair their cars, have like a small lounge for them to just chill what TV and be good. And then you can also have someone there that would do some, you know, fingerling food for the people that come. So he's meeting the needs of his clients way beyond his car repairing services. So remember, he started from before as a trusted advisor. Now he's during. So he has made relationships with who? Chinedom, the car, the car lot owner also made relationships with Obina. And then he has also gotten somebody to have a stand there for fingerling food. So he is in the center of all this relationship. He's in the center of it. So he has been able to get all these partnerships based on the assets that he had, one, and then also the other asset that he had from, the list that he had from Chinedum. I hope that is clear. All right. So note that the, the people that come to buy cars would definitely go through, would definitely want to repair their cars with who? With Sheung. And then Sheung already has a good relationship with who? Obina, the spare parts guy. And this guy that comes to buy cars or the customer that comes to buy cars, there are other sets of people that will just come to come and buy the fingerling foods. So it's like a hub. So you have people that are buying fingerling foods, have people that are buying cars, have people that are coming to repair. So and Sheung is responsible for all this. So after this client or, or his different clients, have done business with him. The next thing is what? To get a new car. They've gone like maybe three or four years. With They've enjoyed business relationships with him. And so the next, next thing is what? To buy a new car. So this is what? After. And most likely, 80% of the times of the people that will buy cars will buy cars from that same car. A lot. Because they've gotten good service from that car lot. That car lot sells cars. They have a good mechanic. They have also he's meeting their needs at different levels as a result of these partnerships that he has created. Right. Now, Shewo can also take this model right, and replicate it across other other car lots. So he's met them before. His customers during he has met their needs after. Right. So that explains the power of mega partnering right from before as a trust and then during as for his skills in um, auto repairs and then he also meets them after that is by another car which is in that same car lot of course he's going to get a commission on that so without any money spent little or no money spent just by reason of the assets that he has which were his skills he now added 
these other assets which is Chinedon's list. Now the benefits of mega partnering, it augments your selling efforts, increases your sales and profitability, lowers your barrier of entry. If you understand your client base, like I said, you have to map it out from end to end. It boosts your market presence. I mean, see, 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 Sheung, Sheung is, the, is at the center of this of all these partnerships. Provides, like I said, he meets his clients' needs at different levels. Contributes substantially to perceived client benefits. Strengthening your reputation. Your entering, you can enter into emerging markets with the power of mega partners. Widen your scope of innovation. Expand beyond ge ge geographical boundary. Like I said, it can replicate system in other car lots. Can control other people's markets. Gain competitive advantage rapidly. Over, over rapidly overpower your competition. Access to knowledge and expertise beyond your company border. So these are the myriads. Sorry, the different um, benefits that you could get from Mega Partner. You can see some of them, some of the benefits that Shell has exhibited. So I'll take the steps again. Be super clear on who your client is and who he is not, or rather, who is not your client. Map the journey, list the resources you need, the assets that you have, right? Be super clear on who has large access to the resources you need to satisfy his clients. And then thinking time questions. Who has easiest and fastest access to these resources? What is the resistible offer I can bring to the table? And how can I use my assets as leverage to access uh, this person's assets for a mutual beneficial relationship? So, this is... I list out my resources. So my resources are somebody's assets. So I need to find that person. Then I need to also know who, whose resources. So you see, assets and resources. So you list the resources that you need. You need to find who, who, ha, who has it as your assets. And they need to find assets. And le use your assets as leverage for partnership that will benefit both of both parties so if you have any questions or before that we're going to be doing after this series of 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 um trainings we're going to be having um free consultation sessions and the links will be sent to your your emails but if you have any questions or you have any yeah, any questions or any back. If you, uh, um, the forms will also be sent to your emails, but if you want to contact us, you can see the details on the screen. So my name is there, your email address, numbers, Daniel's name is there, email and phone number, Othniel's name is there, email and phone number. Thank you very much for joining us on this webinar and have a blessed day. Thank you.